Hi guys, it is a gray, gloomy, depressing Monday morning as we kick off another week in the end times here from Doomsday Trailer in South Austin, Texas. We have made it to Monday, April 21st, 2014 and this mainstream media photo is not from South Austin, Texas yet anyway. This is from Zimbabwe. This is for anyone who does not understand what the end times in Sub-Saharan Africa look like. This is uh, a picture of an elephant who was poisoned with cyanide inside a national park and the cut line for this photo political and military elites are seizing protected areas in one of Africa's last bastions for elephants putting broad swaths of Zimbabwe and the rest of sub-Saharan Africa at risk of becoming fronts for ivory poaching as part of government collusion in wildlife trafficking. There you go. Uh, I might have this part of my economic meltdown roundup rant in a little while. Oh, that's somewhat of a stretch. Okay, before we dive deeper into the mainstream media end times headlines, it's Monday morning, so that means my friends at Truthdig are letting me know what's on their mind. I look forward to reading Chris Hedges, my hero Chris Hedges column each Monday morning. His column this week, The Rhetoric of Violence, The Rage and Nihilism that Come from the Frustrations of American Life are expressed through violence. Our armed vigilantes and renegade gunmen are symptoms of a nation in terminal decline. I haven't read the article. I'm assuming he's drawing some parallels to the Clive Bundy thing going on out there in Nevada. Okay, to resist, meaning to resist uh, the symptoms of a nation in terminal decline, we must build a revolutionary consciousness. Without one, random murder will become our national sport. There you go. And a lot of these are just too complicated. Okay, here's one cooling off in Ukraine, warming up for the GOP. Nope, I'm going, okay. This one I kind of touched on yesterday. We are not beginning a new Cold War. We are well into it. Negotiations over the Ukraine crisis are beginning in Geneva. Pro-Russian protesters are killed. Vladimir Putin accuses authorities in Kiev of plunging the country into an abyss. And NATO outlines plans to reinforce itself in Eastern Europe. Russian scholar Stephen Cohen tells Democracy Now! that hot war is imaginable now and something has to be done about it. This is more about the war between the U.S. and Russia building over there. Uh, okay, some story... The problem with Truth Dig, it, it, it's so intelligent that I can't even put their stories into little 30 second sound bites. But anyway, so to make that a little easier for me, 
Let's move on over there to what's on the minds of those lefties over at Alternet. I'm kind of playing into Chris Hedges' story. Five ways American policies and attitudes make us lonely, anxious, and anti-social. There you go. At each stage of life, our policies and practices are making it increasingly harder to thrive. There you go. As, as my life just completely collapses on this Monday morning and I become more lonely, anxious, and antisocial. That's what I find waiting for me from there. Why kidnapping, torture, assassination, and perjury are no longer crimes in Washington. There you go. From there, for anybody who does not understand this, your cell phone could be a major health risk, and the industry could be a lot more upfront about it. The science is becoming clearer. Sustained EMF exposure is dangerous. There you go. Here, what is Bill Moyers writing about today? Paul Krugman tells Bill Moyers that inherited wealth is destroying our country. America is becoming a society controlled not by self-made people, but their spoiled offspring. And as a spinoff from that, the real money-making methods of the super-rich are far from praiseworthy. More stories on the effects of inheritance. What is Tom Hartman, that old lefty, Tom Hartman? Gee, no shit, Tom. There is an enormous amount of unregulated poisonous chemicals in our country. We all possess components of a toxic waste site inside of us. I've remarked several times that is exactly what my body has become uh, is a toxic waste dump. My body and your body. Okay. Meet the teen who beat terminal brain cancer with cannabis. Okay. Alyssa Irwin is now cancer free and her family believes cannabis oil saved her life. So cannabis oil saved that teenager's life so she could continue her march into the end times. I have actually been having fantasies about getting cancer. Okay. Uh, all right. Anyway, let's move on. Uh, see, I'm already almost nine minutes into this. Let's kick over from fantasies about cancer to fantasies about the economy, I guess. All right, so what was Obama doing yesterday while uh, Desmond Tutu was talking about the genocide in sub-Saharan Africa? Our sub-Saharan African president, Barack Obama, was hosting an Easter egg roll under sunny skies. There you go. Rolling those Easter eggs under those sunny skies as the world collapses around him. All right, from there, here is some really important mainstream media news, one of the top 100 stories on the planet, Baby Prince George Visits Australian Zoo. 
there you go. That is what he was up to. Okay, while that little billionaire, one-year-old elite was at the zoo, what was going on over there in South Sudan? Well, South Sudan rebels slaughtered hundreds in ethnic massacre. Rebel gunmen in South Sudan massacred hundreds of civilians in ethnic killings when they captured the oil town of Bentiu last week. As the oil wars ramp up all over sub-Saharan Africa, elephants being slaughtered, uh, civilians being slaughtered, just another day in the end times, but Farrak Obama has the Easter egg roll under control. And baby George is off at the zoo. So while that little billionaire uh, evil monger was at the zoo, what else was going on there in Australia? I don't know who this guy is, but I'm not surprised by this. Australia's Palmer says won't back government climate plan. Australia's government might fail to get the necessary backing for its unadulterated horseshit climate plan. I, I think uh, this is pretty much uh, cut and dried that Australia has abandoned any pretense about doing a goddamn thing about climate change as Australia just comes off its hottest summer in history. Okay, from there, what is going on over there with our buddies at Halliburton Energy Corporation. Good for Halliburton. Halliburton Post $622 million profit in first quarter net income. All right. What is that? About 200 a little over $200 million dollars per month going into Halliburton Energy Corporation's pockets. Good for them. Okay, we see uh, for the first time Chinese police begin carrying guns. A quarter of the police in Shanghai began carrying guns during routine patrols for the first time this week as part of a China-wide boost in police powers. There you go. Then uh, more stories about the Easter egg roll at the White House. Okay, from the Easter egg roll at the White House, I love this hilarious story. All aboard Sudan's sleek new Nile train in a dilapidated, poverty-stricken country. Uh, they, they, they talk about the, these new modern trains. Guess where the, you, you can take a wild guess who uh, who supplied Sudan with these modern trains. That would be China. China buying off all of these sub-Saharan African governments with these little handouts such as trains and airports and shit like this. This is China laying down all of these railroads all over Africa to get the goods back to port as quickly as 
possible and back to China. Jesus Christ. All right, from there. Oh no, Malaysian palm oil futures edged lower this morning. Damn, those poor palm oil investors. Okay, what is going on over there in Nigeria? Boko Haram claimed responsibility for the deadliest attack ever in Nigeria's capital. There you go. Oh, la, la, la. Let's see what is going on over there in Venezuela. Protesters fight police and burn Maduro puppets in Venezuela. Okay, I think I'll probably be talking about this one in my economic meltdown roundup coming up. Many Canadian aboriginals see no compromise on oil sands pipeline. All right, talking about Enbridge Energy Corporation's plan to build a massive marine terminal to send oil sands uh, oil over to China. But first they have to get past these crazy Indians. All right. Most of these I already talked about yesterday. Here is why you can't debate creationist. Why you can't debate creationist. Uh, I have no desire to debate a creationist. It's like trying to debate a climate change denier. Okay, here we have lawmakers call for tighter sanctions on Russia. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, let me... Uh, we finally get to our first story on a missing airplane. There's probably about eight stories on the missing airplane today and maybe five or six on the sinking ferry story. All right. Stories about Cuba. Okay, this, this is that story about that uh, U.S. airplane in Iran. Iran says plane at airport leased to Ghana. Iran says that a plane which landed in Tehran airport, it was from a bank in Utah, was leased to Ghana's presidential office. And guys, I don't even want to know about these dots, about a bank in Utah leasing an airplane to Ghana's president and that plane flying to Iran. Uh, the good Lord trying to uh, dissect that hairball uh, for the truth. Good luck. All right. Captain America tops box office for third week. Good for Captain America. Okay, finally, a, a story about a missing airplane that uh, I might actually have to read. Why are Americans obsessed with the missing plane? All right. Let me try to answer that question. Americans are obsessed with this goddamn missing airplane because Americans are pathetic, clueless, 
empty-brained morons that have nothing better to think about in their miserable, puny little lives than some goddamn missing airplane that has nothing, repeat, nothing to do with their lives or what is going on with uh, this country, uh, with the global industrial civilization, or the collapse of a planet since they have zero interest in the collapse of industrial civilization and the collapse of planet Earth, they are going in, instead put their attention on missing airplanes, sinking ferry boats, and Captain America. Does that answer your question, Associated Press? Why are Americans so obsessed with this goddamn missing airplane? Fuck the missing airplane! Anyway, moving along. How many more stories from that one about a sinking ferry boat? All right, here we go. This might have to be my, this uh, might be my rant tomorrow. Earth Day Family Fun Dirt Dessert Recipes. There you go. Celebrate Earth Day uh, by eating more dirt desserts. I'll be doing my Earth Day rant tomorrow. Okay, more stories. Two more stories in a row about a missing airplane. <sighs> All right. Uh, gee. Uh, we have a story about a missing airplane. We have a story about a sinking ferry boat. We have another story about a sinking ferry boat. Alright, what's going on over there in Japan? Japan logs record $134 billion trade deficit in 2013. There you go. Uh, here's yet another story. I'll have this one on Wednesday. Asian pollution affecting global climate. This is Reuters spin on that story. Okay. What's going on over there in Somalia? Somali lawmaker killed by car bomb. A Somali lawmaker was assassinated and another wounded this morning by a car bomb in Mogadishu. From there, more stories about a sinking ferry boat. Okay. Gee, here is grief and prayers for ferry victims. And then we have a story about a missing airplane. Let's see. Then ABC News asking the question, are evangelicals out of touch with mainstream views. There you go. Uh, so now we have 24 hours in 60 seconds. Okay, so this is the most important stories on the planet distilled in 60 seconds, the number one being a sinking ferry boat. The story right after that from Associated Plurus is about a missing airplane. All right. Let's see. This is a couple of stories on this about all these prescriptions 
for codeine going out to young children. There you go. Get them doped up on codeine. Another story about a sinking ferry boat. Okay, the newest number for those schoolgirls kidnapped in Nigeria. The latest number standing at 234. From there, moving a few miles east, Rwanda Hutu rebels condemn terror plot. Then we have a story about a missing airplane. Okay, then drone kills 35 terrorists. All right, you go drones, killing 35 of them terrorists. Here's a scary one. Why the GOP needs another Bush. There you go about the latest Bush. All right, but anyway, guys, uh, I could I could go on I I could go on with this, but I wanted to uh, close. Let's see. Let's close today's rant. Several uh, photos of this for anyone who doesn't understand what the the end times looks like as these mega cities ramp up in the end times uh several stories on this this is what are we looking at this child uh looking through the wreckage of his home okay Anyone, uh, how about this for a headline from the end times. A boy climbs out of a charred shanty as he collects reusable materials after a fire raced through a slum in Kalukan City, Metro Manila. On April 21st, meaning earlier today, the fire left one dead and displaced an estimated 1,000 families and at least 400 houses were destroyed during the fire. And uh, what I really love is how many comments have been logged on that picture exactly zero comments out of a planet of seven billion people which is probably how many comments this rant will get as i notice these end times headline rants get about uh 30 or 40 hits a day one of my subscribers, the only comment I got to my End Times headline yesterday is, I am still subscribed to your channel, but I no longer listen to you. There you go. And with that, I, as I know I'm talking to myself at this point anyway, I will wrap up this peek into the End Times on Monday morning, April 21st, 2014 and come back at you with my economic meltdown roundup rant in a few minutes and I will leave you with this picture from sub-saharan Africa of a steamroller getting ready to crush these elephant tusks bye guys